Okay, I'm continuing the recording from here. All right. So talking about risk and hazard, as the name indicates, okay, there is a, um, there, there, there is, uh, this, these are the two distinguishing terminologies. Okay. So what is the risk? Risk is defined as the expected frequency of occurrence of unwanted effects of a physical or chemical agent. The benefits uh, to risk ratio influence the accept, uh, acceptability of compounds. And when we talk about hazard, so it is defined as the ability of a toxicant to cause harm in a specific setting. Okay, so it relates to the amount of a physical or chemical agent to which an individual is being exposed. Okay, all right. Then we have N -O -N -O -E -L, NOEL. So these are no observable effects level, okay? So it is defined as the highest dose of a chemical that does not produce any observable effect in human. So this value is based on animal studies, is used for chemicals, for which a full dose response curve for toxicity in human is unknown or unattainable. So the, uh, the daily intake of a chemical according to WHO is the daily intake of a chemical which during the entire lifetime appears to be without appreciable risk on the basis of all known facts at which at that time so adi values are calculated from noel and certain other uncertainty factors including estimated differences in human and animal sensitivity to the toxic agent now, when we talk about duration of exposure, right? So we have acute, chronic, and delayed, right? When I say acute exposure, okay, it means that resulting in a toxic reaction represents a single exposure or ex multiple exposures over one to two days. When I talk about chronic exposure, so it is over a longer period of time, okay? So resulting in a toxic relation, re reaction represents uh, multiple exposure over longer period of time. Then we have delayed toxicity. So represents the appearance of a toxic effect after a delayed interval following exposure. Tell me guys, when I talk today about uh, carbon monoxide and um, especially when I talked about um, acid rain, and its side effects, right? Sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide effects. So tell me when I said pulmonary edema, so is it a delayed toxicity or what? At what level should I put it in? Hmm. I'm waiting for your response. Just write whatever you feel like that. Okay, this is the class in which it should be categorized into pulmonary edema caused by nitrogen dioxide or sulfur dioxide where should i put it is it a is it uh, the acute chronic or delayed toxicity what kind of a toxicity is this Cancer is the relate good. Yeah, so basically it's a delayed toxicity. Okay, the pulmonary edema is a the is a delayed. So root of exposure can determine the extent of toxicity and outcome. For example, anthrax exposure. You see, this is due to when when a person is ex exposed to the animals. Okay. So, uh, they can actually cause anthrax, okay? Uh, anthrax exposure, okay? All right. Then we have most toxic sedents, uh, toxic, toxic cans to which humans are exposed, for example, heavy metals, okay? Cause toxic effects directly, including binding to functional groups on proteins containing oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen atoms. In other instances, in a process referred to as toxication or bioactivation, a substance may be converted in the body 
to a chemical form that is directly toxic or participates in reactions that generate other highly reactive toxic species such as superoxide ion and hydroxyl free radicals and hydrogen peroxide which cause dna protein in cell membrane uh wait a minute damage and loss of function okay then we have endogenous glutathione plays a central role in detoxification of these reactive species either directly or coupled to uh, the superoxide dismutase and glutathione peroxidase so superoxide dismutase coupled to catalase is also involved in the detoxification pathway if you know that when we talk about catalase okay so this is the enzyme which actually breaks down hydro per peroxide into our body okay and uh, oxygen is being produced because hydrogen the peroxides are not good for our health right okay then we have endogenous metallothionine uh, offers some limited protection for metal toxicity that is it everybody thank you so much i will